It is 6.50, and what a way to wake up if you're just waking up. James face. Blunt uh, on video and on the couch right now. James, thank you so much for waking up. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Actually, you said waking up. You just said to me that you flew in and didn't go to sleep, so... Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, I'm here for a couple of days, and so I might as well enjoy it. Might as well enjoy it. Who needs sleep? Hey, you already talked to us about this, this little baby right here, Moon Landing. Uh, we had, uh, we were showing the first uh, video, we will we'll see it throughout the interview. Um, but I was reading about this and you were saying that this album is sort of a return to the basics, much more personal. People will hear that and say, what does that mean? Yeah, I suppose I've done, this is my fourth album, but what I've done with this one is I went back to the man who recorded my first album, mm -hmm. Tom Rothrock, and I, ten years ago almost, recorded it's an album. It's already been ten yeah, years. Yeah, called Back to Bedlam. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, so having you know, gone on, a, on this amazing journey, um, we thought we'd go back and find that moment again. So what, so the reason you went back to him is what, did you feel like something was maybe diluted, lost, or did you just miss the experience of working with him? Well, do you him? know what, I, I was an indie artist once upon a time on an indie label called Custard Records. Yeah. And Tom is an indie producer, but we, on Back to Bedlam, there was a song called You're Beautiful, mm -hmm. which stripped it of any indie roots and took it to a dirty place called Main Street. It did, well, I mean, you say a dirty place, but it's been a wonderful 10 and years. And it was an amazing experience of yeah. three world tours, and you know, and then recording in studios with masses of musicians and, and incredible studios, and in a way relying on production and, and hiding behind those fantastic musicians and so this is going back to, to just him and me in a studio and working our way and I suppose in, as a result it's just a much more personal album. Right and so you said it, you said he took it to the dirty place and put it into the mainstream world. What surprised you the most when that song broke, when your beautiful broke and, and, and and you went from being the indie artist to being a, a superstar. What was the biggest shock, if you well, will? Well, I suppose I had always expected to do tours of, like, North London. <laughs> um, and, uh, and instead, <laughs> of, doing, the the and instead of doing world tours, um, instead it, was, it has been absolutely incredible. Um, and so 2014 is exactly that for me. I'm, I'm starting another world tour, get, yeah. getting on my tour bus, and we'll hit Canada at some point, and so I hope you'll come along. Oh, well, we, we will definitely be there, uh, for sure. So tell us about that. So it's you and Tom in the studio. Ten years later, you've done, as you said, the big musicians, the big, uh, you've done the, the studio, the very, you know, slick production. How do you go from that? Can you go back? Um, yeah, absolutely, because I suppose if you chuck a, a load of instruments into a studio yes. um, and just me and Tom and let me go and wander around and try and play everything, I don't, I'm not going to have, you know, I play all these things, but I'm not as slick as all those real high-end uh, musicians. And so what you hear are the flaws and the cracks, um, the mistakes, I suppose, that it's taken me a year to make. Tom has to, had, has to be incredibly patient yeah. <laughs> through that time. Um, and yeah, and so what you hear are the fallibility, and music is about expressing not only, you know, your successes, but your weaknesses too, and, and fallibility is what hopefully shines through. Yeah, and he was working with, uh, with the Foo Fighters, and Dave Grohl has always said that the music is all about the mistakes, the cracks, like he'll do one takes and then, and then that'll yeah, be the track. Yeah, and absolutely, and that's Tom as a producer's history, he works with Beck. Elliot Smith and Badly Drawn Boy, real indie artists, and, and so yeah, to record it like that without thinking about the expectation yeah. of an audience, or without thinking about the, rec the, the record label behind it, but just really making something for yourself is weird actually, because then people say, you know what, it's weird that you've made it for yourself, but instead people seem to connect with it just that, that much more. Yeah, I have to ask you this, and it may get you a little bit angry, but I, many years ago I interviewed you and I talked about the single, the single that we're not going to name again. No, but it, no, it's a great single for you, and uh, it was a very romantic one. Is this at all, are we going to find, is there going to be a swoon-worthy song on on this album, or have we left the swoon songs? Do you know what, I think um, there's been a time where I've said, you know, um, that the word romance... Um, you or, did or, say that to or, me. Or, <laughs> sen or sensitive is, is an ugly word for me in, in the way that, you know, it seems I'm soft and delicate. But, you know, um, I'm confident enough to say, look, I was in the army for six years. I'm not worried about with approving myself in that way as a musician. Your job is to stand up on stage mm -hmm. and open yourself up to be judged. And, uh, and, and there are songs of great celebration and there are songs of great romanticism too. Okay, so we're admitting that there are, there's this is... There's the odd one on there. <laughs> the odd one on there. Okay, we, I have to talk to you about this. This Twitter, your, what, what's going on on Twitter with you? You are shaming the Twitter trolls. Explain that to people. So, so people on Twitter can say whatever they want. Um, absolutely, of course. And, and that's why I love it. I suppose and music is about, you know, um, about the differences in taste. And Twitter is about people expressing their opinions. And I have a fair number of people giving me a fair amount of abuse on Twitter, which I deserve wholeheartedly. Um, no, uh, you don't deserve but that. I, but, um, but I have uh, decided that if you can't beat them, you should join them. So I, I, I am on Twitter and abusing myself probably more than them. 
No, but to be fair, you, what, what you do is you retweet them, and then you come up with a response. And I think the majority of them are, are just surprised that you retweet. I mean, what's, kind of, what's some of the reaction you've been getting when you retweet the haters, if you will? Um, it's been actually been really uh, amazing since the, the press have started picking up on this too, haven't they? And, uh, and I think in the last couple of days, I've had 12,000 extra people want to have a listen and see what, I'm, see what abuse I'm dishing out. So. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for stopping by Moon Landing. By the way, we should say that we're, we feel very honored. This was the first stop for you. I mean, you're a very busy guy, and you decided to wake up a little earlier to sit on the, the BT couch with well, us. Well, it's a pleasure. You know, um, Montreal is a place I've come to many times and loved because it's, you know, it's a really fantastic place, so thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for being here. Moon Landing is the name of the album. James Blunt, you must get this album. It's always a pleasure, and uh, it's, great to see you. it's great to see you too. All right, you guys, stay tuned. Coming up on the show, Melanie Jolie, mayoral candidate, will be sitting right here where James Blunt was <laughs> sitting. Lots more to come. You're watching Back to Television only on City.